Hello everybody and look at this for the very first time in the head squeeze tatty armchair a guest it is from Vsauce Michael Stevens. Hello. And you probably thought in fact that this was a virtual chair the work of some idle cartoonist but it isn't look it's real it's made from excellent chair making materials leather and wood and Michael Stevens in fact is real. I didn't know you could play the clarinet actually. I've got some tricks up my sleeve. Have you indeed. What Michael is going to do here is help me later on answer the question, can music make you smarter? In order to help me answer that question, I think you should go to the woodshed, which is conveniently positioned over there, oh. where you can practice. Uh, yeah, I'll today. do that. I'll be right back. OK. Don't know the magazines behind the um, blocks of wood. So, can music, in fact, make you smarter? Now, we need to start with a few basics, such as what is music? We all think we know what it is, we all understand it innately, and it's everywhere. Even your pocket electronic device will play you a little tune when you turn it on. The word music actually comes from the Greek. It merely means the art of the muses, but that's not really terribly helpful when it comes mm -hmm. to understanding what it is. Uh, the composer Verese defined it as organised sound. That's what made music music and not merely a racket, such as the sort of stuff that teenagers listen to these days. And for music to be organised sound, it has to have certain elements that we understand, such as pitch. Pitch is merely the position of a note relative to other notes, higher or lower. And in scientific terms, that's all to do with vibration, frequency, wavelength, that sort of thing. And there's tone and timbre, which are the qualities of a particular sound. What makes one instrument sound different from another makes one player sound different from another, even on the same instrument. And then, of course, there's rhythm. Rhythm is the length of the notes, uh, the weight of the notes, the amount of attack, the accent, and, of course, the gaps in between the notes. And then there's harmony, the arrangement of notes with each other, and counterpoint music doing this or doing this. That's what music is. It is organised sound. Very, very sophisticatedly organised, of course. Now we need to talk about the so-called Mozart effect, which was the result of some research done in 1993 at a university in California by Frances Rauscher. She took 36 students, divided them up into three groups. The first group listened to a Mozart sonata for two pianos. The next group listened to a straightforward relaxation tape. And the final group listened to nothing at all, complete silence. The findings seem to suggest that those who had listened to the Mozart were better at a subsequent spatial temporal task, that is, the ability to manipulate three-dimensional shapes in space inside the mind. In this case, it was predicting how an origami snowflake would look once it had been unfolded. Now, in fairness to Rauscher and all her colleagues, her conclusion wasn't what I'm about to say, or rather, what the press subsequently claimed, which was that Mozart made your children more intelligent. And that caused a great rush on Mozart CDs. Mozart went straight to the top of the charts and all the rest of it. What the research actually showed was that listening to Mozart created a 15-minute boost in spatial reasoning. And, in fact, any music that excites you or stimulates you will have the same effect. There is a Led Zeppelin effect, there is a Rolling Stones effect, there may even be a Gary Barlow effect for all we know. But the fact is, even banging your fist repeatedly on the table is enough to stimulate your mind and improve spatial reasoning briefly. But it is briefly. I'd like to contradict myself now and say, in fact, music can make you smarter, but it's not because of the Mozart effect. It's no good just listening to music. You have to play music to make yourself smarter. And this is where Michael comes back in. You're much improved. Thing is, he hasn't really just learned to play the clarinet in a mythical woodshed just over there in the corner of the studio. He's been doing it since he was 10 years old. And at some time, he managed to fit in a degree in neuropsychology. Right. Well, I haven't played the clarinet in 10 years, so I'm not quite where I would like to be. Right. But you're right. Playing music might be able to make you smarter. But this depends on what we mean by smarter. What we know is that musicians tend to have corpus callosums that are about 15% larger. Those are the fibers that connect the two hemispheres of your brain. They also have larger cerebellums where motor skills rest, 
and about 130% more gray matter, which is where a lot of the cell bodies with their axons and dendrites exist. All from playing a musical instrument. Seems that way. Because I learned to play the piano at a fairly young age, and that probably explains why I'm very intelligent and very practical and of course, quite charming as well. Being young makes a big difference because your brain is more plastic and can grow at that point much more easily. Right, as opposed to when you're older, when generally it shrinks and becomes stiff and uncomprehending. Exactly. So what actually happens inside your brain when you're learning to play a musical instrument? Well, the brain is made up of billions and billions of neurons which are connected together by synapses and messages can pass between the neurons. They're called neurotransmitters and they can tell your brain whether you want to do something or indeed when you don't want to do something. Neuron communicates with neuron through the synapse. That's the basics. This is quite complicated, so a good analogy is to imagine those neurons as a lot of rowdy school children running around in a yard. The musician, the practicing musician, is a teacher who comes out and rings a bell for order. At first, only the really well-behaved, well-brought-up neurons in their sensible shoes go and stand in the line. All the brattish ones in their trainers are still running around the yard. But as the bell is rung more, they eventually come and stand in line. They then form this neural pathway. That is what happens in the musician's brain through practicing. In basic terms, the brain forms this line by increasing the number of receptors on the receiving neuron and increasing the number of neurotransmissions coming from the sending neuron. The more of either of those, the more likely it is that the receiving neuron will get the message and pass it on. The slightly bad news here is that if you want to train your brain to the point where you could be considered an expert musician, your maestro, it will take about 10,000 hours, or roughly three solid hours a day for 10 years. That's a lot of time. It's a huge amount of time. It requires massive dedication. Well, here's a better use of your time. Checking out more episodes of Q&A. It's a great show. Everything on Head Squeeze is great. So go subscribe, check those videos out, and I'll leave you with this. Mm -hmm.